your selection criteria include adequate evidence of validity for selecting the, the applicants, uh, the ad, absence of adverse impact unless able to demonstrate business necessity, uh, that the selected scales or indices are sufficiently linked to the selection criteria. Recall my advice early on that you, you in addition to beginning with the requisite jurisdictional statute and, and uh, regulations, added to that any agency-specific criteria for selection, uh, and perhaps uh, underpinning that, as, as Joe had talked about earlier, any larger jurisdictional criteria, uh, that you then select instruments that are responsive to, linked to, for which there's adequate nexus with those selection criteria. The selection criteria should guide what you're measuring. Uh, and then you want to make sure that whatever instrument you're using is legally phase appropriate. So at the pre-offer stage, you're using a proper instrument. And at the post-offer stage, you're free to have greater depth, uh, excuse me, breadth. Is there a difference between these officer scores and just in general? Do we use norm scores, or is there a... The question is, are, is there a difference in scores between community norms and police applicant or incumbent norms? The answer is yes, there's a significant difference. And one, in my opinion, should use both. Should look at both. You would certainly want to compare them against the community to see, because that's, that's the basis for which the original is usually interpreted against the community norms. But you also want to have some understanding about how those scores compared to the applicant pool. And for example, how would we get those specific police scores for like the iPad or... The question is, how do you get the, the specific <coughs> police norms? Well, it's a very good question. And the answer to that is, you have to spend money to get them. Because it costs to uh, obtain, the test publisher has to obtain those norms. You just can't quote Has them. to update those norms. You just can't cheat to get there. So that if, you, if you, for example, you score an MMPI by hand, or you uh, use old versions that don't have updated norms, you're not going to get it. If you score a PAI using just the community norm uh, method, you're not going to have the opportunity to compare it to police norms. To get that, you have to purchase those scoring, uh, uh, you have to score it, through the test publisher who makes those norms available to you. So the MMPI 2 RF has comparative norms for uh, correctional officer and for police officer currently. They don't yet for firefighter or for dispatcher, but they're developing them. Uh, and the PAI has them for fire, dispatch, um, police, all of the public safety jobs. So uh, we have them for correction counselors, for corrections officers, for police officers, for okay. dispatchers, and firefighters. All right. So all the public safety positions are represented in the Johnson Roberts norms that include the CPI and the PAI and the STACTI? Yep. Okay. And I'm sure that's true for IPAT as well? Those 16 PF has police and fire Okay. Norms. So uh, the answer is yes, you. you, you you do want to use uh, applicant norms as well. Okay. Um, now, California Post also, also offers some interesting uh, and I think useful guidance for choosing a personality test. And it's, it's contained in the pre-offer personality testing resource guide that I mentioned to you earlier that you can get online. And they, they advise that you, you should choose a testing company for which there is test publisher staff available for consultation. People who are knowledgeable about the test, who can help you work through specific interpretation challenges, uh, perhaps where the, the, you have questions about the applicability of norms for a particular population, or where you have maybe a, a, a low base rate response. You want to choose an instrument for which there's updated norms and content. And if there are updated norms and content, you want to use the updated version, not using the old one. Where it is free of objectionable or unallowable test items, that is phase inappropriate items, even though the instrument itself may be phase appropriate. 
uh, qualified to administer and interpret. That is, you have had proper training and education in interpreting uh, and administering and interpreting the instrument. Where there are uh, a test score, where the, where the test score interpretation and uses are compatible for your use. So you you, you want to have the uh, a, an interpretation that can be useful to you in your selection. So if it's if if it's you're using a pre-offer test that measures uh, dimensions that are not useful to you, or let me say it another way. Um, I'm trying to get an, trying to think of an example of a of an interpretation that would be unuseful. It's not coming to me immediately, and I don't want to take too much time. Can anybody think of one where you have in, interpret test interpretations? Well, that, like the MMPI, you can get a, an interpretive for an adult uh, clinical or for like a child custody case or something like that. Good so, example. Yeah. Good example. That wouldn't be useful to you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sorry, San Diego. Uh, yes, so it's like the MMPI, you could use a, a custody evaluation interpretation that isn't going to be useful to you in the application to public safety screening. Where you have good quality of technical information through a, a, a technical manual and where there is uh, a, a known history of test-related litigation, either the absence of or adequately resolved and documented uh, test-related litigation. Those are useful um, criteria that POST describes in detail in their resource guide. So I advise you to, to download it. It's available free on their website, and I think it'll be useful to you.